Hi, I'm Anthony Gosher, consultant, spinal neurosurgeon and founder of the Spine MDT. And this video is about degenerative disc disease. I'm going to explain what it means, does it matter, when it matters and if it requires treatment. It's a very commonly used term in the healthcare profession when describing uh, somebody's scan. Um, and I actually think it's an inappropriately used term and its importance is massively over exaggerated. But hang it around and I'm gonna explain why that is and when it does actually matter. Let's briefly look at the anatomy so that I can explain what a disc is and what degeneration means. So the human spine we have here, a side view of it, is made up of a stack of bones called vertebrae. If we zoom in a little bit into this picture here, each vertebrae is a cylindrical block of bone with an arch of bone um, attached to the back of it. So if you stack up these bones and arches, here's a cross section, you create a tunnel in the middle and through that tunnel runs the spinal cord which is what transmits messages between the brain and the body. And in the lower, the lumbar part of the spine, this bit here, spinal cord terminates and then you just have all the nerves that run down the middle of the... Between each vertebral body in the spine, you have these cushions and that's what discs are. They're made of a soft, squishy sort of substance and the textbooks often describe it as crab meat and that is actually what it looks like. It's this stringy white material that's quite squ squishy and acts as a shock absorber. The disc itself consists of an inner nucleus, um, which is the main substance of the disc, the, the squishiness, and then this outer uh, fibrous layer called the annulus. So this is what it looks like as an MRI scan. This image on the left are vertical slices through the body. This is a vertical slice right down the middle of the body. And again, these are the building blocks of the spine, the vertebral bodies. Here you can see the arches at the back of the spine. And then if you stack them up together, you create this tunnel in the middle, this white space that contains this gray structure, the spinal cord and the nerves. And in between the bones, these are the discs. And this is a typical scan of someone um, so the discs themselves on, on this specific sequence, they've got this br nice brightness inside them and that's what a healthy disc is. And then as a disc starts to wear, it can get a little bit dark as this, as this one here uh, is shown. Um, and that's essentially what degeneration is. This, dege de this degenerative disease is basically a fancy phrase that means wear and tear. Here's a really important study that was uh, published in Spine uh, quite recently, which looked at images of people who do not have back pain. And this is a really interesting study. This is what it's showing, the disc degeneration, look at all these fancy words that people, that patients I see, commonly read on their MRI or x-ray report and come and see me in a panic. Um, above the age of 40, look how common the disc degeneration is that wear and tear I described. 68% of people, and these people have, in this study, have not suffered with back pain. Now, that's actually a broad term, disc degeneration. It can be disc signal loss, where it looks a little bit dark on the MRI. Again, 54%, a bit of loss of height, 45%. And you see loss of height on a plain X-ray. I can see this in patients who have been to a chiropractor who happens to have X-ray facilities on site, they have a plain X-ray done, and then they overemphasize that they've got loss of disc height, which is a very common feature in people who don't actually ever suffer with back pain as well. Disc bulges, protrusions, annular tears, the lining of the disc being torn, all of these things are very common findings in people who do not have back pain. So when does it matter? Well, if you have herniation of the disc um, that is also causing nerve compression and your symptoms aren't not necessarily back pain, but sciatica, pain going down the leg, then yes, it matters. Um, that will either resolve on its own in the majority of patients within a few weeks, uh, but this can be treated with a minimally invasive operation, a microscectomy, or even a nerve block injection. Also a couple of scenarios where the disc itself can be the source of the back pain alone. So here we have an MRI scan which shows all the discs are lovely and healthy. This one disc at the bottom, the L5S1 disc, has completely degenerated. Um, but in association with it, in the bone adjacent with the eye of faith here, you can see this bright whiteness in the bone, this inflammation. That itself is not an uncommon feature. So here we look at um, a SPECT CT of the same patient, and it shows that um, 
there is some increased osteoblastic activity here this area here that takes up the contrast that we inject um, the radioactive substance and it glows and it matches the findings of the MRI scan so it helps us prove that this is indeed the pain generator. This patient failed the conservative measures of uh, physiotherapy uh, injections to the spine and therefore underwent uh, a lumbar fusion where we removed the disc implanted this cage here with some screws and it just allows these bones to join together and their pain subsided. But the main take home message is that in the majority of patients, the degenerative disc disease seen is a very, very common finding. And even in patients with back pain, that's not necessarily the source of your back pain. It's so often for back pain alone, imaging MRI scans, fancy tests are often a waste of time. Um, the diagnosis, if, if there's anything sinister, can usually be made um, clinically and often the treatments are non-invasive um, with uh, either a physiotherapist or an osteopath. Um, and I tend to prefer some form of exercise based therapy, um, to keeping the spine moving in general movement, getting blood flowing into the, in, into the bones of the spine. Um, generally improves things um, i'm a big fan of uh, cognitive functional therapy which has been well described and researched by uh, peter o'sullivan and proven to be more effective than the standard care that we often get where we simply teach core strength exercises um, this is really trying to understand what the different triggers are um, not just mechanical triggers but other factors that are going on in our lives um, and also have normal beliefs about the spine such as hearing these words degenerative disc disease and believing that there's something sinister going on in our spines um, and then there are certain adaptations you can make in your own general behaviors the way you carry out certain movements certain trigger avoidances and this has been proven in the literature in studies done uh, to be very effective Scanning can come in handy when there are signs and symptoms of nerve entrapment or dysfunction. So pain radiating down the legs or um, weakness and numbness. Um, that way you can actually visualize if there's nerve entrapment. And then depending on the severity of the symptoms, correlating that with the scans, that's when we can decide on other treatment. I hope you found the video helpful. If so, please click like and subscribe. It really helps people suffering with back pain and spine disease find information that I try and post uh, that's useful on this channel every week. For more information, you can visit us at spinemdt.com to find out ways we can help you.